Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're glad to have you still there uh, watching and for us being a part of our conversation. Um, well, I'm sure you already know by now that the uh, presidential candidate of Labour Party, uh, the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, has filed his petition to challenge the victory of Bola Tinubu uh, of the All Progressives Congress in the February 25th. Um, general election. Mr. Obi, who came third in the election, filed his petition to challenge the outcome of the poll at the presidential election petitions court in Abuja at about midnight on Tuesday. He alleged that the election was characterized by various irregularities, including the non-qualification of Mr. Tinubu and his running mate, Kashim Shatima, uh, to contest that particular election. Uh, he also is alleging that Mr. Tinubu failed to win the majority of the lawful votes cast at the election or in the election, just as he could not secure one quarter of the lawful votes cast in the federal capital territory, uh, FCT Abuja. Uh, Mr. B is also alleging that the election was conducted in substantial non-compliance with the provisions of the laws. Um, Labour Party's candidate is therefore urging or praying the court um, to either declare him the president-elect in the belief that he secured or scored the majority of the lawful votes during the election or nullify uh, the entire election and order a fresh, uh, a fresh election is what he's uh, is saying. Joining us to you know, provide some context and the background to this, of course, we know the case is, in, is uh, now before the uh, presidential elections petition court so we won't be going into the substance and the um, the the details to know who is guilty or who is not guilty uh, director of public affairs and lead spokesman the big tent he's also a member of the Labour party's presidential campaign council uh, and also the conven convener of the country first movement i'm um, talking about chris uh, Nwokobia. uh chris Nwokobia, thank you very much uh for your time and good morning to you once good again good morning my pleasure to be on with you. Okay. One of the uh, the questions I uh, um, I mean I've been wanting to ask, and a lot of people would like to know, is uh, the Labour Party's legal team, led by Dr. Uh, Levi Uzoku, SAN, um, paid a visit to the INEC headquarters where they met with um, the chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, uh, who told them that INEC had nothing to hide. But for their um, application or, you know, their move to inspect the sensitive materials as, you know, granted by court, including uh, the beavers as the court ordered. Um, the INEC chairman had directed the legal team to go to the states. Last time I checked, um, they couldn't even get up to the nine states that they applied for. They had gotten the certified two copies of uh, two states. What is the status as we speak? What information and data, uh, what exhibits is the OB legal team heading to this presidential elections petition court with, following the difficulties that they had in getting these things from INEC? First, let me say as I address this fundamental issue, that uh, the legal team is unwilling to disclose all the details that we have but interestingly, like we told the court yesterday, we have enough information, enough facts and figures, enough evidence and data to obtain the election. The first thing the good team is asking for is for Peter Greg Roby to be declared the valid winner of the 25th of February election. And the alternative that the election be declared void and a fresh election conducted. And these are fundamental issues because across the country, the election was largely flawed. We witnessed the greatest electoral malfeasance in our country's history. We witnessed untold electoral larceny and that is why, um, since the election was announced, Nigeria has been like a graveyard. There's been some sort 
of the silence of the graveyard. Nigerians know that the candidate they voted for was not announced. And Peter Gregory has told us not to resort to illegal protocols or means in our call for the retaining of his mandate. But interestingly, we have a fantastic legal team, and Peter Grogrobi is a fantastic fighter. You remember that that was how he got his, his mandate in Anambra State. I also remember that when the tenure was allegedly over, he went back to court. It was true, Peter Obi, that we have what we call staggered elections now because he will have to do your four years uh, constitutional mandate. So I think that we're lethargic, we're not coward, we're not lazy about the protocol and the process of getting back this mandate. Mm. We're also aware that if the president select, permit my use of words, if the president select, selected by INEC, were popular, he wouldn't be going around begging people and asking people to talk to Peter Greg Roby and threatening those who are aspiring for Senate presidency that if they do not prevail on their brother, quote and unquote, from the Southeast, they will not give the position of Senate president. To okay. the people from the southeast, okay. I so, think so, all those so, black, so, black men will fail when the judiciary yeah. is done with this job. Yeah, Mr. Woko, before we move on to the next question, but these allegations that we here can substantiate, just yes, would like to put that out there. Um, uh, but but we just want to know, as at March 10, Dr. Lee Vaiuzoku, SAN, and the legal team uh, of 60 lawyers had gotten the certified true copies of uh, Dynec results from only two states. I think uh, some days ago, two days ago, they were in Emo state. So I don't know if that's now three. Um, this th this is a, so was a subject of, a, of, a, of an, um, uh, a petition to the appeal court saying, give us leave to inspect sensitive materials. And it was a subject of appeal by INEC. Uh, do you have an idea? Can you tell us how many states availed uh, uh, your legal team of the information you wanted? Just, just so we know. You know, like I said, uh, don't forget that I said in no uncertain that we may not be willing to disclose all the details we have, but information uploaded to the IRA is there. The information from our party agent is there. The ones we've been able to get from the state uh, INEC offices are there. And clearly, I'm quoting one of the lines in the petition that we put in. Clearly, our legal team has enough sufficient evidence, according to lawyers, to pursue this case. And, okay. and you know that what stickers for details and facts, you know, we are not going to arm the opposition when they have their, the details of our petition, they will they will respond to it. But these are these are matters in the in the in the in the courts. So I know that every Nigerian now let me give you quick instances. INEC has set guidelines. INEC has regulations. The Electoral Act provides for certain electoral objectives. In every respect, INEC has even admitted at some point that there were glitches and the conduct of the 25th of February elections. The facts are glaring. The facts are lucid. So as we talk, what is important is for Nigerians to watch the legal brickbats and legal fireworks and with better breath, see how our lawyers ensure that the justices who will sit on the matter do justice to our quest for our mandate. Because, because I want to say without equivocation that Nigerians 
and indeed the masses of our people, the international community, and everybody watching agrees that Peter Gregg will be won the February 25th election. Well, uh, you know, if you look at some of the prayers uh, that's been prayed, although we have said that this case is sub judice, and then we can talk about this, but you also cannot also ignore the fact that uh, you know, some of the issues are not entirely, you know, connected to the entire elections. And so we know that you have some that are connected, but the prayers are, you know, in different dimensions. However, I'd like to ask you if you do believe in the judiciary at the end of the day to see a positive outcome or to see an outcome, uh, an outcome that... Uh, a lot of Nigerians would say, hey, because, I mean, it feels like it's in the majority, would say uh, it's speaking for the people or the fate in the judicial system, especially with the time. So I'd like to cite an example. Remember that the late Ghani Fayomi's, uh, he had a case against Tunubu at the Supreme Court and was kicked out on technicality as a, as a result of him being a governor and hence immune from prosecution. So when we talk about the judiciary, we also look at the fact that uh, in terms of uh, putting out justice or, uh, you know, the entire process, we seem to have a lot of delay in the judicial process. And do you see that there can be any positive light at the end of the day before the swearing in? Uh, because one of the reasons why mm -hmm. Tinubu was not sworn in I mean, one of the reasons why that case didn't happen at the time was because he was a governor and he had impunity. And so uh, when you get to a case where he's sworn in, he becomes president. Uh, we're looking at all of this now. So do you see the judiciary living up to expectation, you know, before the swearing in date? Let me quickly say that Nigerians are anxious to see the justice done before the swearing in. Your question is very opposite. Nigerians want a new dispensation of proactive judiciary where, at the end of the day, nobody who has a stolen mandate is sworn in. And I think, I think the judiciary will be fast about it because, uh, indeed, lawyers are filed within time and they understand the urgency of now. Increasingly and interestingly, let me say that before now, the fears about perhaps the judiciary bungling the entire process have been thrown away by the fact that our principal, Peter Gregg, will be, has said in no uncertain terms, fate that the judiciary will do right. Our lawyers have said that faith that the judiciary, is, the, the judiciary will do, will do right. And I've said at several fora that my confidence is predicated on the fact that with the facts that we have, if the devil were to be a judge in this matter, the devil will be free, fair, and do justice. Because the facts that we have are monumental. The facts that we have are concrete. But let me say that we... we hello? We can hear you. Go ahead. Walk over here. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Chris, go ahead. Okay. Let me say clearly that what I expect is that the judiciary will be will be and expeditious in handling this matter because um, we will want the right candidate. We want the person who won the election to be sworn in on the May 29th. That will resuscitate the hope of the Nigerian people in the electoral process. That will rekindle the faith of the Nigerian people in the democratic process. That will reignite some air of patriotism across the public space. Nigerians want things to be done properly. They want the judiciary that will rise to the ante and do what is proper, try to right. And I believe that they will. And I also believe that they will do that within time. 
Okay, thank you very much, uh, Chris Mokube. I'm glad to say we've been joined uh, uh, by the Director General of um, the Ogun State Environmental Land Protection Agency. He's also a member of the uh, Presidential Campaign Council 2014-2019 uh, All Progressives uh, Congress. Um, Dr. Ibrahim Moshino, thank you very much uh, for your time. It's good to see you. Um, um, your, your immediate reaction to the the uh, the news that uh, Peter B and Labour Party have filed their petition challenging the election of uh, Bola Mitilbu uh, as president of Nigeria uh, at the presidential elections petition court, Dr. Shinoa. Good morning, everyone. Then, then good morning to my dear brother, my colleague on the other side of the high. Um, it's not a big deal. Uh, Peter Obi can go to any court he wants. Uh, that's uh, not news. It's not something special. It is fundamental of my rights. I should argue, on the other hand, also, is entitled um, to file his own complaint where will be won, especially a massive region in the southeast, in Anambra, uh, where some of his boys and campaign team, like my other friend on the other side, massively suppressed voters. In Enugu, the same thing. In Plateau, the same thing. In the Habia, the same thing. In uh, so many places that, you know, uh, will be suppressed, uh, you know, voters. And also, uh, we have the right as well to defend, you know, those uh, massive rigging by lawyers. Uh, I think it's less than a day for the expiration of the filing of the, you know, the petition. So it's entitled, it's not a big deal. I don't want us to waste more time on Mr. Peter, he's a, he's a decent man. I think he's, he's a great guy. But, you know, we meet in court. So it's not a big deal, you know. So, and, but what I want to say here emphatically that none of OB presidential campaign council should hang the Nigerian judicial system by preempting or, you know, trying to, you know, uh, you know, discuss or suggest how the outcome will be. They filed their own petition. Article, article did the same thing. We also, you know, are contesting some of the major, 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 you know, battleground states. You know, where massive rigging, you know, the rigging machinery of Labour Party were deployed through some civil servants and a lot of things. So, you know, if you are rushed to the court, you know, they say if you rush to the court, it doesn't mean you are right. You know, the jurists in Nigeria are, you know, qualified to handle such cases. And I can assure you that, you know, OB should be prepared for 2027. He has done greatly well. He should go and relax. You know, by 2027, we will see, you know, once Ashwadu deliver on his mandate to the Nigerian people, you know, making some, you know, some strategic decision, which he's going to do absolutely, you know, like the way he did in Lagos and some of the decision points. President Boy has taken. Of course, by 2027, he will come into the ring. And of course, um, you know, he will try his best as well. And, you know, APC will continue. So OB should, and his team should be patient. Filing a petition does not mean you are right. You know, we've seen people who rush to the court to file frivolous petitions at the end of the day. They are thrown out. Um, there are other partners in PDP, or, you know. The Labour and PDP are, you know, based on the same, the, the same trouser with different pockets. You know, also, they are, if you look at the pattern of their petition, you will know that both of them are working together. But unfortunately, most of their plan, you know, hurt both of them most. So, well, I don't Shinobo, want to lose you. Hear me? Can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Yes, Very well. because we're almost out. I mean, we're really out of time, not almost. Uh, this might probably just be a last question for you as we, you know, wrap it up. So, as a Nigerian now, uh, not without any affiliation to any political party, would you say or do you think that these elections, that of the 25th of February and uh, that of the 18th of March, was a free, credible uh, elections that were conducted in accordance with the law? Anyway, I don't know your states. In 1993, I don't know if you are able to vote in 1993, <laughs> if you know, as I claim that the election is so superb, is so fantastic, there are pockets of violence in any way, in any democratic setting. Even in the United States, you can see Donald Trump in one of the foremost, foremost democratic setting. Donald Trump is saying that there's a massive rigging, there's a voter suppression in the United States. So no democracy will come to you in plain 
as knowing democracy is interest, is a battleground, is context. You know, you have to assuage me, I have to assuage you. So no, no democracy on this on this earth that will come 100% perfect. So the last election is credible. If you are saying the election is not credible, how can a sitting God know? A sitting God know, lost his senatorial bid, lost House of Bread, lost the governorship in Ka Okay. Uh, uh, state. All the House of Bread were won. In fact, Labour won four. PDP cleared all the votes. Okay. Yeah. Look, Kano. Kano was swept away by NMPP, a party that is unknown. No councillor, no chairman. No. So I'm, I'm trying to look at the parameters you guys are using to judge if the election is not free, fair. Or, or, um, um, so um, you, can you we know, bring I, in that? Uh, before because of time, Chris Wokobia. Um, Chris Wokobia. Uh, um, but I think, Dr. Oshino, I don't know if you've read the. Um, uh, Dr. Ibrahim, I don't know if you've read the United States Embassy report on, on the election and the EU report as well. But uh, Dr. Shin, um, Dr. Nwokobia, uh, final uh, thoughts Excuse on me, you. Why, why can't EU? Why can't, why can't EU? Why can't EU? I'm sure anybody cannot tell you because I am a research fellow and I work with EU. Why can't EU release statements when the United States conduct the election? And the sitting president is, is not can, allowed, can not allowed to allow the dispensation. Okay, so Donald Trump yeah. is contesting yeah. the election. He's saying there is, there is rigging there. They should release the report on the American election. Okay, sir. All right, sir. Um, 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 the, do, Dr. Wokobia, please. Can I respond to my brother, then? Yes, go please, ahead. yes, please go on. Quickly, let me say that for the first time in our history, politicians are defending one wrong with another supposed wrong. Instead of talking about the flood election, my brother is talking about what he supposed happened in Anambra, in Imo, and all that. Does that make a wrong election right? That's one. Number two, the international community clearly said that the election of the 25th of February was largely flawed. Up until now, his principal is begging the international community to endorse and acknowledge his victory. Even the devil knows that the election of the 25th of February was monumentally flawed. I don't know why we try to defend the indefensible. It was our water Scott who said, Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. What the APC and the supporters of the president select are doing is to try to lie to a nation. Let me give you this quick instance. Very quickly, sir. Because in 1979, very quickly. about 44 years ago, when Nigeria's population was barely 100 million, you had more voters. Imagine that. 44 years ago, more voters voting for the presidency than the total number of votes cast 44 years after in 2023. Who's lying to who? Who is this evil who? That election should not stand, cannot stand. Okay, all right, all right. That we, is we, the truth. We, we have to go, gentlemen. We truly love our country. We must ask that the judiciary be done what is popular in, in, in Delta states where you are. If they think that the candidate is popular, let INEC conduct a fresh election at the worst instance. All right. And you see how monumental... G gentlemen, thank you very much. We, 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 we're, we're, we're grateful for your time. We're grateful for your time. We, we are not talking about the case here because, of course, we're just talking, basically taking your thoughts uh, regarding um, the election generally as we've been talking about uh, the election since it ended. Um, but as for the case in court... Uh, before the presidential election petition court, of course, the sanctity of the court, the wisdom of the court is respected, and we're looking forward to seeing the arguments by the various parties and a decision made by the panel of uh, judges uh, at that uh, appeal or court of appeal. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time, Dr. Christian Wokobia and Dr. Ibrahim Machinwa. We please, have to have please, both of you please. again sometimes. Oh, yes. You know, yes. that's why this filing his own petition against, against both of them, against Obi and Atiku. I'm sure you are aware of that. Okay, is, is, is time not gone because they have a 21-day limit? And today is... Go and uh, find out. Go today and is find 22, out. 22, 22nd of... Um, 
Okay, we'll Please wait for that. Find out. Yeah, we'll, we we'll, would we'll like to find yes. out. Uh, PDP has also filed, I think they beat it midnight uh, or sometime yesterday. Midnight something. yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, yes. yesterday. So so we we have the Action Alliance, AA, we have ARM as well. Other parties are filing petitions and all that. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. You're welcome. All right. Uh, we have more discussions coming up. It's quite interesting. We need to give them one hour <laughs> to talk about, about these things. Well, we'll just take a break, and when we return, uh, we'll probably look at the issue of recycling. As uh, this has been a global campaign and awareness as in that regard, and how far and what can we do with all of that? I mean, all the waste that you use uh, is that going to be, you know, another way we can actually be mm. useful or productive with all of this? Is a conversation we'll be having with an expert. Please stay with us.